Algebra of vectors. This is a short one. In the previous section, we talked about resolving a vector to its x and y components. Okay? We saw that if we have some vector a, we can break it into its x component and we can break it into its y component using trigonometric functions, using cosine and sine. Here we have some vector a, it's 10 meters long. How far does it go in the x direction, how far does it go in the y direction if the vector makes a 30 degree angle with respect to the horizontal? All right, real simple. I want my x component, a times cosine theta. 10 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866. So 10 meters times 0.866 gives me 8.66 meters. A y, sine of 30 degrees, you should know this is 1 half. So 1 half of 10 is 5 meters. So there's my x component, 8.6 meters in this direction. There's my y component, 5 meters upward. And the total length of the vector is 10. I can write this a vector as a sum of the x component plus the y component. What if, this is just another example of another vector. Here I have another 10 meter long vector. I'm going to um, take this vector and add it to the previous a, but we'll resolve this one too. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so 10 times 1 half is 5 meters. Sine of 60 degrees is 8.866, so 8.66 meters. All right, so I'm going to take A and I'm going to add it to B. Now, look, oops, <laughs> went too far. A doesn't point in the same direction as B. A is pointing at 30 degrees, B is at 60 degrees. How do I add the two together? Add x's to x's and y's to y's. When I put these two together, Notice, I take AX, add that to BX, and I get the resultant X component. I take AY, and add that to BY, and I get the Y resultant component. Now, normally, I'm just going to ignore this I hat and J hat. Remember, I said I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. But you should see this as X's go with X's, Y's go with Y's, and you simply just add them together. Apples and oranges, okay? So here's AX, I add it to BX. This plus this gives me the overall length of the resultant in the X direction. <clears throat> here's AY, I add that to BY. That gets me up here, and that gets me to the resultant. So you can see how we can add vectors together. AX and BX are both parallel. You can just add their magnitudes together like we did right here. By and Ay, they're both in the same direction. So we can add their together. And that's how we analytically add vectors together. <coughs> what about reconstructing? I want to know how long this vector is. Okay. Um, I want to know the angle of this vector. <coughs> um, if you want to know the magnitude, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? It would be rx squared plus ry squared square root. The angle we always get from inverse tangent. All right? 13.7 meters divided by 13.7 meters. You know, it's sort of fortuitous that it goes in that direction. We know that the inverse tangent of 1, okay, y is the same ratio as 1, would be a 45 degree angle. And that's what we get here. <coughs> so, let's resolve another vector. Here's C, it's 7 meters long. Um, notice I'm at a 200 degree angle. 180 degrees is the negative x direction. If I go 20 more degrees, I'm at 200 degrees. I take the length of the vector, 7 meters, multiply it by cosine. Negative 6.6 meters. And again, negative, it's pointing in the negative x direction. Take the sine of 200 degrees, negative 0.343. Multiply that times 7, I get negative 
So in this case, this vector has both negative x and y components. Why don't I take all three vectors that I've resolved and now add them together? That's really easy. Look, all I need is one more row of addition. This plus this plus this gives me my x component. This plus this plus this gives me my y component. It's real easy. A plus B plus C is just taking us a dis on a displacement, if this is a displacement vector, of each x component in the horizontal direction and each y component in the vertical direction. Okay? So, you want the x components, I'm sorry, you want the x component of a resultant, just add up all the x components of all the, the, the vectors that are there. You want the y components, just add up all the y components. Okay? You want the total length, take the square root of the x component squared plus the, uh, I'm sorry, the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And inverse tangent gives you the angle. All right, here's an example. Hiker begins a trip, first walking 25 kilometers at a 45 degree angle, okay? South, so it's a negative angle, south of east from base camp. Then, on the second day, she walks 40 kilometers, 60 degrees, north of east to a tower, okay? What's the total resultant right here? Well, what I need to do is find the x components of each vector, find the y components of each vector, and then add everything together. Okay? Here's AX, I go 17 kilometers east. Here's AY, I go 17.7 kilometers south. Here's BX, I go 20 kilometers north. Here's BY, I go 34.6 kilometers. I'm sorry, 20 kilometers east, I'm mixing up my directions. 34.6 kilometers north. Okay? And that gets me my result. Alright? Add the x's to the x's, the y's to the y's. Here's my total trip in the x direction, my total trip in the y direction. Okay? What if I ask the, the question, how far did I go? What is the total length of this vector r? There's where we use the Pythagorean theorem. What if I ask the question, where did I end up with with respect to the, the origin in terms of north, south, east, west. I use inverse tangent for that. So here are my x and y components. I square them, take the square root of their sum, and I see that I've traveled a total displacement of 41.3 kilometers. In terms of the angle, the angle is the y component divided by the x component, inverse tangent, I've traveled 24.1 degrees north of east. Very simple. 